Welcome back again. We are now picking up the second part of the background to the Apostle Paul in this series for the Agone Institute and for Barclay College's master's degree. Make sure you're taking those exam quality notes if you're taking this for credit. We said that Paul was raised a Jew religiously, taught in an and he had this culture that was Greek, linguistically, thinking-wise, all the, all the great philosophies and philosophers and poems and poets. But yet he was given a Roman citizenship from his grandfather or father who had served the Roman legions being on a trade route from Rome to Egypt. And now let's take a look a little bit more about this actual city of Tarsus that Paul was born and raised in. It says that in such a city Paul was born, and you see the remnants here in your slide, the, 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 the picture of the ancient gymnasium where Paul would have come as a young Greek-raised boy. Yes, he was Jewish, but this is where he would have been trained. And we're beginning to see why Paul was positioned by God to be the world evangelist. Yes, raised a devout Jew, circumcised on the eighth day, of the tribe of Benjamin, the most favored tribe. The name means son of my right hand, named after the most famous Benjaminite, King Saul. Now, Benjamin means son of my right hand. So, if he had been raised Scottish, it would have been being like a McDonald with a name like Angus, Cameron, or Ian. That he's the son. Mick means son, so I'm the son of Donald. So he couldn't get more Jewish, is the point. And yet, he was living in a world governed by Rome. He received his Roman citizenship. And Tarsus, especially during the first century A.D., in the year of our Lord, surpassed Athens even in culture, and it had stadiums and gymnasiums, which are mentioned by the historian Strabo. So the gymnasium was the place where young people were trained in body, mind, and spirit. This is where the YMCA got it from the ancient Greek culture as they understood it through the Apostle Paul. Now this picture is not of Tarsus, but rather is of the of the um, stadium here and the the arenas, if you will, of where Paul saw if he would have gone to Olympia of that area. We're not sure if he got there or not, but at least he was very aware of it. But this is ancient Olympia. At the gymnasium. Right there beside the Sidnus River in Tarsus, the gymnasium was not just for athletics, but it's where they learned language, culture, poems, the philosophers. And so Paul very much got all of that there in Tarsus. Now this slide shows you the highlight that here is the list of the ancient Olympic victors. All these victors all through the years. And you can see that this particular man was from Tarsus. You see, we read here that Apollophanus, the Tarsian, was the winner in the stadium in the year 85 A.D. So the reason that I showed you the Olympic Stadium was because this is where this man, who had trained at Tarsus, the same place that Paul had trained at, had actually become a world-class athlete. I'm just trying to draw for you how this comes about. I live in the city of Canton, Ohio. The Football Hall of Fame is there, and every young child, every young male child in the city, a football and American football is placed in that crib. This is what it was like for Paul growing up in this culture. They knew athletics. They strove to be good athletes. 
Now, in your eighth slide, you'll see a slide that shows you what was on the side of a Greek vase, vase, we would call it. And you can see that there is a coach that is instructing an athlete. And that athleticism, character development, and education all went in together. Again, body, mind, and spirit. You see this teacher and mentor. You see the, the athlete learning. You see, this is what Paul grew up in. Paul understood the significance of being a well-rounded person from his training in the gymnasium. This is part and parcel of, of what made up this budding world evangelist. And in your ninth and last slide there, you'll see that sports was a medium of communication with the Greek culture, with the people of Greek culture. Again, here are the runners running in a race, and you can hear Paul's great words in 1 Corinthians 9 and 2 Timothy 4 and places that he talks about, run your race, I've run my race, and, and we run to get a prize, and so on and so forth. Many of these verses that we're looking at in the spiritual de development videos for this course. So you see that this is what he would have seen, these vases, these artworks, all of these kinds of things. And this is what he grew up in. This is who he was. You have to understand this in order to understand what he wrote. You have to understand his background and how he was raised and how he was trained in order to understand how to interpret these verses how to then not only interpret them, but to th then to apply them. So you that are going into sports ministry, you that are becoming sports ministers or working in the sports outreach, you will be dealing with a lot of Paul's passages because he talks about sports so much. And your athletes and your coaches and the people that are coming to your ministries, they're going to want to know about these verses and what they mean. We're helping you as a sports minister. We're giving you the foundations in this course out of which you can then interpret the Bible, going all the way back to one of our first videos about how to interpret the Bible. Take all those notes and apply them when you then come to these verses that Paul wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit so that you will know how to then make sense of them and make good theological sense so you can pass these things on to the athletes and coaches, the parents of athletes, the spouses of athletes, all those people that you're called to. Okay, now remember that this is the second part of two sections in dealing with the background to the Apostle Paul. There were nine total slides. Make sure that you get between these two videos all of those notes, exam quality, and get them turned in appropriately. We're going to move next, and we're going to go a little bit deeper into the life of Paul so we can understand even more how some of the scriptures that he was inspired to write can make sense to us. Thanks for being part of this. I'm your host and professor, Dr. Greg Linville. We'll see you next time, and we'll learn more about Paul then.